Uh, let's bust some myths here. This is an interesting thing we're talking about today. Let's start with one of those things that a lot of people seem to think. Do, do red cars, do sports cars get pulled over more often than others? Uh, that's a good question, and the answer is no. Okay. The person who violates the law gets pulled over more than others. Uh, people go, oh, well, you just stopped me because I'm driving a red car. Well, no, I didn't. I stopped you because I, pa I paced you for the last two miles at 93. You passed 27 other cars, and nobody passed you. Is it and that people who buy red cars tend to drive uh, faster? Well, it, that, uh, I, that hasn't been my experience. Okay. Um, however, uh, it's it's the person who's who is flagrantly violating the law that draws our attention, not the color of your car or the type I of car. I think there's a subconscious. Uh, if any uh, officers say they see a certain kind of car and they say that person's probably driving a certain way. That has not been my okay. experience, but <laughs> um, but I know some people who own that own that kind of vehicle and get caught driving that way think that it may be because of the color of their car or the type of car they're driving. Gotcha. Okay, we live in California. We live near the beach. A lot of people might drive without shoes on. Is it legal to drive barefoot? It is. Um, and uh, there's nothing in the vehicle code that requires you to have footwear. However, something to take into consideration is that if you have loose fitting footwear like sandals or maybe mm. extremely high heel shoes or platforms or something like that, it might be safer to take those shoes off so that you have a firm planting on the pedals of your feet. Right, because sometimes the sandal can get caught on a, like a mat, for example, yes, right? Yes. Do crashes come from that sort of thing? Um, I have had a couple experiences where people said that their footwear got caught in the pedals and they mm. were unable to respond. Um, in time, but uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is you have to drive at a speed and a distance where you can perceive and react to anything that presents itself in front of you. And uh, the safest thing to do is if you have those types of footwear, footwear, sometimes it's best to just take it off and drive barefoot. Okay, so follow the rules, whatever, however way you have to uh, in that respect. All right, let's talk about applying makeup, eating, having a pet on your lap. Like what, what of these things is legal or illegal? Uh, there's nothing specifically that prohibits that. However, if you are doing any of those things, and um, you are driving, the officer could, based on the cir circumstance of you driving, you could be in violation of what we call 22350, which is the unsafe speed law, meaning that you are driving too fast where you can safely operate a motor vehicle while you're doing that act. So basically, eating, putting on makeup, having a pet that's maybe distracting you, you're driving at an unsafe speed. So you may be driving at the speed limit, let's say 65, you are distracted by putting on makeup or reading a mm -hmm. newspaper or, or something like that, and that you're driving at an unsafe speed. So a safe speed at that, in this case, would be zero. And you could receive an uh, unsafe speeding ticket for doing those acts. So that sounds like driving. it would be illegal in that yes. case, that you could basically say anything more than, than zero is, is, is dangerous. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so there, my point is, is there's nothing specifically that prohibits you from doing that. Okay. However, it does cause distractions, and based on the officer officers via, or observations, they could determine you're driving at an unsafe speed for conditions while you're doing those acts. Gotcha. It reminds me of the the cell phone law, and that you know, anytime you have your just your attention distracted or your hand on a, on a phone, for example. Right. Well, we do have laws specifically that, that, so know specifically <laughs> for that act, but it's it's similar in the sense that it causes distractions. Okay. And uh, last, I want to ask you about checkpoints. Of course, we know about DUI checkpoints uh, that. Happen happen from time to time. What about smog checkpoints? I've never heard of this, but is this a thing that uh, people well, have? Well, uh, uh, yes, it, it does. Um, the Bureau of Automotive Repair in the state of California is required by law and to, to go out periodically into the community in California. Uh, usually they're in communities that are known for um, pollution and air, poor air quality, and they randomly check vehicles for the, their emissions. Uh, the check only takes about 10 minutes. It's completely voluntary that people do not have to have to participate unless they want to. And if they their vehicle does happen to be a gross polluter, there's no repercussions, there's no violations, there's no citations. It's just merely uh, a way for the Bureau of Automotive Repair to, rep to report to Sacramento at how we're doing as far as emissions are uh, by random selection in that community. However, if you do select it to do, participate and they do check your emissions, also it does not it does not replace a smog requirement for mm -hmm. you to get a smog check uh, when you register. It's not a DUI vehicle. checkpoint or no. a smog checkpoint where you pull up, you're like, oh my goodness, I haven't got my smog done. No, <laughs> since yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, it has it has nothing to do with that. It's just a, it's just a random periodic check.